tuned in to Athletics Double LC yeah, 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 yeah. with Lamar, uh -huh. Lucius, uh -huh. Big League Chu, yeah. and my man Clyde. <laughs> you are about to be schooled in all things track and field. This is experience. Yes, sir. We are talking past, past present, present, future. future. Y'all listen up. Let's go. Hello, everyone. Athletics, uh, Athletics LLC World. Welcome to another episode. There's nothing in my cup, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> bringing that one back. Welcome to another fun episode of Athletics LLC. As always, I've got three fine tiles with us, joined by a fourth one today, just for some fun. You know, for poops and giggles. Let's 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 introduce a fourth, a fifth tile. I'm sorry. So to start off the night, we'll go ahead and um, introduce uh, the regulars and then go ahead and introduce our guest. So Lamar, comb in my hair Huffins. We will get explanation on that later. How are you this evening tonight? Or uh, sorry. I'm spectacular. Spectacular. That's spectacular. an awesome job. All, all I'm gonna say is it wasn't clear exactly what you said. Sure was not. And we'll it's talk, hilarious. So we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yes, we will. We can't talk about it now because Micah might be listening. But we're going to talk about that later. But go ahead. <laughs> oh, yeah. My bad. <laughs> um, Clyde, hello, sir. <laughs> I'm good. Keep, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Is there a reset button somewhere? <laughs> no. Too late. Oh. We'll check your cup at, after this episode. Basically. I know. Oh. Right? Last but not least oh. of the regular, Sir Lucius. Hello, sir. Yeah, I am well. And uh, I, I, I've, been, I've been a little bit fired up all day, so let's go. <laughs> let's get this I know. done. Yeah. So Lucius has hyphy juice, get crunk juice, you know, yeah. depending on the coast that you're on. <laughs> yeah. He's got some kind of juice. <laughs> yeah, some kind of juice today. Right. Well, last but definitely not least, we've got a guest tonight to join us in, in all the, the fun shenanigans that we're going to put on tonight's show, uh, today's show, I'm sorry. Uh, we have Mr. John Drummond with us today. Hello. How are you tonight, sir? I'm nervous. Nervous yeah. because you're driving or because you're with us? <laughs> I'm nervous because I'm with y'all. The driving part is easy. The nervousness is all four of y'all in one place. Well, like just, <laughs> just jump, baby. Just don't, just don't fall start. You good. Uh, oh, you got jokes. Oh. Everybody got jokes oh. today. Oh. We're starting hard. Oh, oh I see. We we going hard tonight. Okay. Oh, oh man. Let me wow. go ahead and McCullough. Let me go ahead and man, I, I made a little I jokey joke about a comb in my hair. I wasn't going let to me, start. Let me introduce <laughs> myself then. I'm I'm John the Panda tonight. Because <laughs> obviously I was trying to Here come on go. dignified, but now I, I see y'all want y'all want the panda tonight. Okay. Yeah, we, all, we always want the panda. Dog. The the, the oh. audience always loves the panda. Oh look. Uh, Clyde is here for the pay always. <laughs> okay. okay, trust me. That but that was the first thought that went through his mind when he saw you were going to be on the show. Was we got to get JD to be petty? So, <laughs> well, you, I mean, can, can that be? Can we just get into that right there? Since you know, not everybody is familiar. Uh, Mr. Drummond, can can you explain the context of what has become the phenomenon of the panda? So yeah, I um. Y'all know I'm on a, a, a eight year mandatory vacation. And so I uh, have been sitting back watching track as a, a spectator and enjoying it actually. I didn't realize track and field was so much fun without the adrenaline rush of standing with a, a stopwatch in your hand. And um, there's a page on Facebook called R The Real Deal Track and Field. And um, I used to hang out there just, you know, uh, I think it started back in like 20, 2012 was when I kind of got engaged with that page, but I would just make appearances just to read. I was a, you know, a spectator, just like, you know, go in from time to time. And they were talking about, you know, athletes. And it was always, you know, the good stuff you want to hear about track. And one day um, I was watching a meet and I wanted to, I decided to just go ahead and just say what I saw. And uh, I posted what most people were thinking. I would put it down on the page and, Panda came from the actual song. Uh, I was watching a uh, designer and uh, he did a performance, I think on the, the, the BET awards or the, the VMAs or one of those music award shows. And he did a performance and it was plain trash. It was garbage. It was booty. 
It was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And so as a result, I was like, any performance that I see from henceforth now, I'm going to deem it panda, like after the song, because his performance was garbage. So I then gave it a, I gave it a definition and it has become um, kind of the moniker of track and field when someone performs bad or say something stupid or does something dumb uh it's it's not uh no respect to a person it don't care if you're a coach it don't care if you uh, if you're a, a, a journalist because i've pandered some journalists i don't care if you're <laughs> if you're uh if you're a, a, a children website i don't care if you're a parent i don't care if you're a kid <laughs> if it's a panda performance you get the panda and so you know and i take no prisoners you know, no one is safe, 8 to 80, blind, crippled, or crazy. If you can't walk out, drag you, but I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> you see, so the, my favorite part of the panda is when you give people pandas for trying to protect people that you gave the panda. That I love oh, that. I love oh, that. first of all, don't even yeah. try it. It's like, don't give me this, <laughs> I feel sorry for them because I honestly told the truth. If you got out there and you took butt naked last, there's no fix. Let's talk about it. Shikari goes to the Prefontaine Classic. And she gets butt naked last, okay? Like she stripped all the clothes off and get all the weight that she could get off of her and still took last place, right? Then she goes and does this interview and she mad because she took last. Like, no, you lost. You took butt naked last. You don't have a right to be mad, Pam. Period. It's like, it ain't personal. It's just that that's what you did. So I'm identifying. And someone asked me, what did I think about it? I said, she sounded like a crackhead you know, that just, you know, was mad, you know? So at the end of the day, that's what Panda is. I tell the truth. I tell you what I saw. I don't care if it was a performance. You can have second place at the World uh, Olympic Games. I'm sorry, Delilah gets a Panda, okay? Because she got beat and the world record broke on her twice. That's Panda right there. You know, some folks are like, oh, that's not Panda. She, she ran faster than the old world record. She got beat and the world record got broke on her twice. I see it the way I see it. I call it the way I call it. Then you got folk running in the hurdles before they even get to the first hurdle. How you trip and fall into a hurdle? It's like oh, amen. that happened, to, amen to that that. happened <laughs> in the 400 hurdles. Yes. I'm like, the gun went off and you fell. How did that happen? You know, that's pandalicious. You can't get more panda than that, you know? Your wig fall off in the high long jump pit. Come on now. Why you ain't got that thing strapped down? You know you're a jumper. <laughs> You know, bouncing around, your wig gonna fly off, right? Panda. So I, I mean, I, I can go all day. I can go all day. Okay, Big Lee, what's the what's the next question? <laughs> oh my god! No, wait. There's a part two. There's a one B to that one. There there's also a a phrase that has been coined oh, by you. Yeah. yeah. And so it it kind of is synonymous at this point. That define. Give us <laughs> give us some depth to that. You forgot the hashtag. <laughs> it's hashtag, yeah. hashtag. Fat define. You are absolutely so correct. so so here's here's the real deal. Um, you know, I like everyone have reached a certain age where your body just does not uh lose weight like it wants to. And so I uh started out on a quest about three years ago, maybe longer, four years ago, might be longer, five years ago. I just know. <laughs> I just know it was a while ago when I started it. And, uh, you know, I've been fighting the fat for the, for the whole time. And it's like, it seemed like every year I gained five pounds without trying. Like, you know, I turned 53 last week. Uh, I'm sorry, last month. I turned 53 last month and five pounds just showed up. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> but the Fat Define is really my quest on my weight loss program. That's what Fat Define is. And it also kind of like, affects me because, you know, I'm always thinking about food. So like the other day, you know, I gave a scripture because I wanted, you know, to kind of be motivational, but I had a cup of coffee in my hand. So, you know, you know, I, you know, or like the day before that, or a couple of weeks ago, you know, I was doing some research about strawberries and, you know, what they do and how they affect your body. So I went and bought me a strawberry donut. I mean, it's the same thing. It just depends on how, you know, you process. But uh, I just keep it 100. You know, I, I try to bring the reality to people in their weight loss process that there are people out here who, who did it right, like myself, you know, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. Strict diet, you know, ate to fuel that I'm not competing. 
you know, number one, food tastes good. I didn't realize that the whole time I was competing because I was always one cracker away from starvation and a drop of water away from dehydration constantly in my whole life. But now I know food, food tastes good. And, you know, I, you know, what they call cheat days, I have more of those than I have actual eat right days. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> just sharing my journey, you know, hashtag fat to five. That's my journey. Oh. Well stated, sir. Well said, well said. <laughs> Good job. Well, and I'm sure there are so many who actually identify with that and just to have a heart not actually saying it out loud. So <laughs> can I just interject real real quick? This is this is uh, JD, this is absolutely perfect because big league has never met you. Right. So oh, wow. all she know all she knows of you is, you know, internet presence, right? Yeah. But you have done an incredible job of giving her a snapshot of who you really are. Like we all know you, well, there you go. Does, but now she knows you. <laughs> yes. yes, I do. This is JD. <laughs> all right. day. Now I'm going to actually, sadly to say, I'm now I'm going to have to actually pay attention to you on social media. Like I see oh. you and whatnot, but I mean like actually pay attention, not just scroll oh. through it. No, you, you, you definitely, you definitely want to experience the panda in the height of the panda. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I don't, I try to, I try to give as much information, real information, but also like to provoke thought too. I say things to make you think. Um, and uh, I have a lot of information. I don't use it as a weapon. I use it as a teaching tool. I use it to, you know, get people like uh, Clyde going because I like to get his goat and get him talking. And uh, I like to have philosophical debates with Lucius because, uh, you know, he thinks he is smarter than everybody in the room. And I haven't really had a chance to go. Oh, I haven't oh, had a chance to go. I haven't had a chance oh, to go. I mean, when I say that, I say that, I say that, you know, humbly, because he, he, he believes he's a statistician. And, uh, you know, he'd be throwing stats from 1956. Like, you know, oh, yeah, the rest I will of do that. That doesn't make me like smart. That means that I just read more than y'all do. That's all. <laughs> or, 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 or use Google. Or, or use Google. Exactly. But that, that does require reading, sir. Just so Absolutely. You. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and as far as, um, as far as Mr. Lamar combing the hair, you know, I haven't had too many toe to toes. Although when we do have our conversations, they're, they're healthy debates. They are. And, uh, <laughs> You know, and, and they're definitely debates because I don't know a time that we just agreed other than we agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a fact. <laughs> I mean, that's a common thread just on the tiles right here. Is so. <laughs> You're there welcome you go. to the club. There you go. <laughs> hey, you know, somebody's got to be contrary. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, my God. You wear that well, sir. You wear it well. Right. Hey, you know what? Somebody's got to be contrary. <laughs> All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about you and your history in track and field. Um, the question is asked, uh, being labeled as one of the best starters in track and field, what is it that makes one a great starter in your eyes? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a kumquat. That's a, <laughs> that's <Tell> a, uh, <laughs> what's, that, what's that fruit artichoke? That's an artichoke. There's a lot of layers to that question. Um, let, me, let me give it to you. Uh, let's give you the cliff notes. Uh, no, one, no, 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 no. We want the real. Okay. Well, I think, you know, there is a lot of, and, and I've been around a very long time, not just as a coach. I, I haven't, I've had, I have had a long career in track and field as an athlete, as a coach on all the levels possible. I've coached at high school level. I have not coached at a college level, but I've coached college athletes. Um, I've coached internationally. I've coached on national teams. I've been in the rooms with these guys when they started making up what Ralph Mann has made into a book. I was there when this was just conversations. I was there when it was, you know, um, on a on a on a paper board, uh, you know, and 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 um, magic markers uh, when they were, you know, sitting in a room coming up with concepts on how to start, how to run the hundred, how to do hurdles. You know, all that stuff. I was kind of the, the, the fly on the wall in the room by privilege of being with one of the greatest coaches in track and field, uh, John Smith. And, um, you know, him bringing me along, telling me, sit here and listen. 
uh, sitting in rooms with guys like Brooks Johnson, when him and Bobby Kersey are having conversations back and forth and sharing that, you know, sit down at the table information that you don't get at seminars. And uh, I've been privileged to sit at the bar, you know, when they're sitting down drinking a glass of wine or having a beer and just, you know, talking track. And even I can go further and say some of the older guys like Dr. Leroy Walker and uh, Dr. Tony Lee and, and, you know, those guys when they were around at the Mount Sac Relay sitting down and just having these casual talks about track and you pick up a lot of information. And so to get directly into answering your question, you know, the start is more than just the sound of the gun reaction in the first few steps. It's, it's, a, it's about movement and the entire body moving in sync with the reaction to the sound. It's not about your head down and drive phase. It's about the components of your foot on the pad, how your feet are connected to the pad, how, um, how your hips are aligned, how your center of gravity and your mass is, the weight distribution to your legs, to your arms. And I mean, I'm not gonna say, you know, folk do it wrong or do it right. I do have a method in how I teach it so that you can get the most power out of the pads into your legs, into the first step. Um, there's some methodologies that I've heard in the last few years that I've challenged and have had healthy debates about like the toe drag. You know, I know, you know, historically it's a teaching mechanism that has become habit for a lot of people. Uh, but just to say, you know, how do you get there? It's, it's understanding the dynamic of application of force, simply put. And when you understand the science of force and then movement, and then putting all that into an angle and getting your angles correct in the first five steps, then we're talking about the start because the start is not just reaction or to responding to the gun. It is what's happening in the first five steps of all of that happening. Does that make sense to all these great coaches on the, on the call? I mean, it makes sense to us. Uh, it makes sense to us. <laughs> now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask a question, JD. Sure. Uh, this was a uh, somewhat healthy debate between Sir Lucius and I. Do you think great starters are born or built? I think reaction is, is a, it's a gift. I think the start can be built. Okay, so I'm going you know, to ask the question again. Do you think great starters are born or built? I agree with what you said, but I want to know if, you, so like, we'll take you, right? You would have been in the first two people at 30 meters, no matter what human beings we put on the track with you. So you were truly an elite starter. Yes. Do you think that more of that was God's gifts? Yes. Or, 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 or your innate understanding of all the science that, we just, that you just spoke of? I think, I think, I would say 85% of my start was my gift my ability to react to the sound of the gun and my fast twitch fibers responding. I think the other 20 for 20 or 15% was the science. And the and when I say science, I'm talking about being taught what to do with all that power and distribution of reaction and, 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 and uh, uh, reflex. Um, I mean, just, just naturally, you know, I used to play the hand game, you know, where you put your hands on the other person's hand and they got to smack your hand. You know, I, I was just naturally fast at that. I could just do it, no problem, no, no chaser, no, and just beat the crap out your hands, you know? Um, I don't know where it came from. So yeah, I would say it is definitely gifted, um, but I can also say that it can be taught because, you know, it's a matter of, you know, activating the fast twitch fibers. And there are uh, some, I would say teaching mechanisms and some uh, uh, some uh, training tips that can help that help improve that. But I just think for me, you know, not to boast or brag, yeah, I think it just I just have a even now. If you put me in the blocks, I would beat most people on reaction, even now with my fat old self. <laughs> and uh, in fact, Mike Holloway, uh, uh, Lucius, Lucius can can kind of uh, vouch for this because I believe it was twenty eleven. And it might have been 2012 at one of the camps where uh, Wallace Spearman was talking trash to me. And I told him, I will beat you to 10. 
you might get me to 20 because I'm out of shape, but I will beat you to 10. And he didn't believe me. So I warmed up and wore his behind out to 30. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't close to 10, 20, or 30. It probably wasn't, and it probably wasn't close to 40 because he quit. So <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just I'm, let it, I yeah. just let it go. I let it go. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so you know. You know, I, I work with my son. My son is, is training right now. And, you know, he's very gifted out of the blocks. And I noticed that, you know, it's a natural reaction to the gun that he has, you know. But I think to answer your question, it is definitely gifted, but it can be taught. Uh, I, I think I think most people who understand what they're talking about would agree with that 85-15 analogy. The problem is, that 15 is really, really crucial and in the wrong hands will make or break your entire career. Yeah, because, the, because the 15 can ruin the 85. That's oh, the wrong absolute. Yeah. Ruin the 85. That's absolute. That is absolute. And I gotta say that it wasn't a overnight process. You know, I'm gonna say this, the drive phase that everybody so eloquently used, that was built on my back. And yes, Maurice Green can take credit for it. Out of voting can take credit for it. But before they even came to John Smith, John Smith and I were already working on what we know now as the drive phase. And um, that terminology was constant in my relation with him since 1993, when I first started working with him. And um, we always talked about my reaction, but the coin drive phase was what we had to fix and develop because I was, I was getting great reaction, but I was popping up. And he was like, after two or three steps, you're standing up and that's when, you know, you're emitting a whole lot of, you know, energies that you could use down on the other end. And so once we were able to capture that and kind of harness that, you know, we then figured out, okay, there's more to this reaction body movement. And that's when they put the cameras on me and Dr. Ralph Mann came out with his stick man and we started working on you know, what that's supposed to be and what that looked like. It took them almost uh, uh, almost a decade to even build a model for the, um, the the dry phase and the start. They didn't even start, they didn't even really start, you know, put the science behind the start until like right around Usain Bolt. So we're talking almost a decade. Or more. That's the, that's the pearl. Man, now you're going to have people looking up on the internet all these things oh, that yeah. you just said. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, all right. Uh, second question, digging a little bit deeper into the past. Um, given the successes of HSI, which is the group that you trained with, and Santa Monica Truck Club, should we be mimicking those group training methods to see group successes again? Or do you think that we need to create a completely different path? I think the different path has organically become what we see to today. Um, Santa Monica was an all-American team with American athletes coached by an American coach that afforded them to do some phenomenal things like break the world record in the four by two and be considered a world record, break the, you know, challenge the world record in the four by one and it would be considered a world record, et cetera. HSI took that model and we, we had enhanced upon it and we brought in uh, non-American athletes like Otto Bolden to our group. And as a result, you know, we would run fast relays and different things like that, but we would not be able to be called a world record because Otto is not an American. So that training mechanism kind of changed the game for other coaching groups to expand themselves because we created HSI to be that club and was hoping that that would catch on and more people would have a club type uh, training group give it a name so that we could advance the sport. See, we were always thinking of making the sport better, not making just ourselves better. And we felt like what HSI had to offer was what track and field needed, was a club type system with training groups that could advance itself into races against other club type groups. Let me give you an example. There was no USA versus the world until US, until HSI started going to like Texas Relays and Penn Relays as a group. And then Nike jumped on that bandwagon because most of us were Nike athletes and they would throw in a Michael Johnson or they would throw in an Oba Daly Thompson or they would throw in a, a Denikin or whatever so that they could put Nike on it 
So it wouldn't be HSI per se. And so that's kind of how that kind of fell out. So I would say the organic transition is you now have, you know, elite coaches who just coaches just about anybody. The unfortunate thing is they don't put their name on it. HSI has stood the test of time and it has continued to be what it is, but even they don't run under quote unquote HSI anymore. We stood strong on the HSI banner. And when we got together as a relay, we went in as HSI. We didn't go in, in as Nike. We didn't go in as Team America. We went in as HSI. And so, um, yeah, I think they should try their hardest to get back to that because sports likes team type events and they like to see some type of an association with a name, not just country. I think the country thing works great for world championships. It works great for Olympic games and any type of world championship type event. But if you want track and field to really advance itself, those groups need to create the excitement of the competition that we created when we went to the pin relays, when we went to the Texas relays and competed under our, you know, group names. And, and see, and I okay. said some of that. And I think that the issue that I see is that the numbers at HSI, the numbers at Santa Monica weren't huge. And oh, I yeah. see you see these training groups now and they're just very large numbers you know what effect do you think that's had on the development because we've seen a lot of you know the number of athletes that come out of the ncaa system that have run 10-0 and you know some of them run 9-9 that just disappear it's it's becoming pretty you know, pretty pretty a pretty big number do you think that because they're in these really large camps that's stagnating their growth i think what's happened is it's become a farm system versus a training group Mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of these guys are wanting the big payday. So they're, they're taking the contracts and going where they're being told to go. And it, it wasn't always like that, you know. It wasn't, oh, he's a Nike coach. He's an Adidas coach. If you're an Adidas athlete, you can only go to that coach. Back then it was, he is a great coach and he's coaching this group and that coach could coach whoever he wants. Uh, so that's part of the, that's part of an issue that has been creating this, uh, this limited uh, athlete development. The other thing is you have coaches who are trying to be, so those have to pinpoint them and point the finger, but they're the, the two power hitters. So you got these guys who are wanting that because they're trying to secure themselves. And so what was organically done, again, you had these coaches who were assistant coaches at universities where they were allowed to coach you know, international athletes, because some of those athletes literally came from their program, and it was an extension of their university program. Uh, there was some, I, I'm going to say, jealousy that created this divide there. So it's like now, if you're an assistant coach, you can't have international athletes, your focus is my university, yada, yada, yada. Whereas it was a benefit because you got this training group, and it was a recruiting tool. And uh, it helped to know that, hey, this guy also is coaching the world fastest man. So I want to go to that school. So it, there's, there's a lot of variables that I can answer you on, Mike. But the bottom line is money has become the, the, the key element that has limited a lot of development to these athletes. When I say money, I would say there's not, there's not enough money for the coaches to be paid. There's not enough money for the athlete to pay the coach. And what used to be you know, you go over and you really make your money on the track. Now it's, let me get the contract. And if I get the contract, then the performance falls on the guy who is coaching that athlete who just took this big payday when they still got to go through some basic maturity. And so, you know, and again, I can unwrap this thing several ways, but I just think that there's no answer to how to fix it because Pandora's box is open and you can't push this stuff back in. And I will also say there's some coaches out there that just ain't as good as they think they are. And there's some athletes out there that are getting paid that ain't as good as they think they are. So it's creating this constant, you know, year after year, people who are really good not getting paid and people who just did something phenomenal getting paid and we're still waiting for them to, to kind of come into their money. Does that make sense? Uh, no, big time. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Now this, when, this, when this Alan is, Johnson said it the best. They, these kids are about contracts, not careers. The, Absolutely. The, this is this isn't on on our, our question script, but 
JD's too good right now. So I have to, for the audience purposes, JD, there was a time in this, in this game where HSI absolutely ran the world in this sport. Can you give them a, like what that was like? Can you explain like how it was when you guys literally dominated everything? So there's a couple of things. Number one, we were, I always said this when we had meetings, HSI would never be destroyed from the exterior. It would always implode. It would never explode. It would implode. And I said that because we stuck together. We didn't always have to agree. We didn't always have to, you know, like it or understand it, but we stuck together and we made sure that everybody got what they deserved. And so our performance was what we did in practice. Now, people can draw their own conclusions, say what they want to say. I will say our group, we got up for practice. We came in that gate and we was ready to go at it every single day. And we took our bodies so we couldn't go because we knew if we could beat each other, nobody else would be able to beat us. And we, we would drag each other around that track. So it started at practice. There was no... No, um, there was never a prima donna in our group. Everybody that walked in that fence was the same person. I don't care if you broke the world record, you got treated like the day you, you came to practice. There was no, um, there was no, oh, well, he can do that because he's that person. No, you come in, this is the workout, get your butt up. If coach said walk, you get up and walk. If he said, go get some water, you got some water. We did what we were told. And we trained like we were number two. Maurice Green used to say it all the time in practice. In order to be number one, you got to train like you're number two. And we would go and practice like that. He would... Oh, no. I lost him. J.D., J.D. He was like, you know, I thank God I'm not sitting behind a desk doing what I love every day. And so, you hear me? Can you hear me? The last yes. thing, I think you cut out when you said train like you number two. That's the last thing I heard. Yeah. Okay. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let me pull, let me pull over. Cause I'm... Uh oh, he might've pulled over in the wrong spot. Yeah, he pulled over in the back. Oh. I don't want to go to a dead <laughs> spot. Give me one second. Good. Am I good? I think so. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh. No, you're All not. All right, good. I'm gonna stop right here. <laughs> Since I'm good, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Am I good? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no. No. Dang okay. it. We keep saying early. <laughs> Is this good? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. So, <laughs> Maurice, Maurice would come to practice. And, um, you know, he would say stuff like, you know, if you want to be number one, you got to train like you're number two. Um, he would come to practice and he would say a prayer and his prayer would be, you know, God, I thank you for, you know, allowing us to be outside doing what we love. You know, we're not behind no desk. We're not pushing no pencil. We're getting to enjoy this fresh air and we're out here training hard, you know, or something like that. And, um, you know, we would get motivated to push each other in practice. And I got to tell you, the reason why Maurice probably became the best of us all is because he was trash when he got there. You know, his technique was horrible. And, you know, John would like use him as an example. And when I say John use him as an example, I don't mean that in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice got cussed out. He, John made up words for, for Maurice, okay? He cussed him out so bad. And it was so bad that we would put Maurice out in like lane eight. So John couldn't see him. I mean, it was like that. And, <laughs> but, you know, all that made him work hard. Same with Otto, you know, you know, Otto would come to practice and, you know, he would want to be the prima donna, you know, but John would just light into him so hard. It was like, you ain't did, you know, S-H-I-T, you know, and, you know, and he was just like that, you know, and, and all of us would take turns, you know, helping each other because we wanted to see each other be better. It wasn't about, who's going to be the best because we know any given Sunday, it could have been one of us, you know? Um, and that's where I would say your gift and talent would kind of take over and take command. But I think in, in, in the essence of the groups today, 
you know, what made US, uh, what made HSI so great was no matter where we went, we went as a unit. There was no division. There was never a time where if Mo didn't run and John couldn't get in the lane, then Mo didn't run. You know, if, if Otto couldn't get in the lane, then John didn't run, you know? And so that's just how we were. And we, we didn't so much abuse it, but we used it to make sure that our group got taken care of. And that's what made us dominant because we didn't just fight to get in the lane. When we got the lane, we placed top three. So we would validate the fact that this is why we wanted this person in the race, you know? And so when you go back and look at all of our races and you look at the, the lineup, it was Maurice, Otto, John, John, Maurice, Otto, Otto, John, Maurice, Otto, Maurice, you know, I mean, whatever. You're going to see us one, two, three. And no matter who trained with us, they fell into that, that fold. Antoine Maybank, um, Danny McRae, uh, Jason Rouser, you know, Quincy Watts was with us for a while. Kevin Young. I mean, you go down the list, John Regis, uh, Tony Jarrett. I mean, Dennis Mitchell. I mean, everybody has had a hand in being in that training environment. And we pushed each other like it was a track meet. And that's how we train every freaking day like it was a track meet. There was no such thing as a slow day. There was no such thing as an easy day. It was who was pushing the pace. And whoever was pushing the pace determined how fast we was running that day, period. That is. Man. Does that, that get was... it for you, Clyde? Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. So let's, let's push another button because I like this. This is a fun game. <laughs> So you had one of the most successful runs leading the USATF relay programs in recent history. Oh, God. <laughs> what do you think of the current state of the program? <laughs> oh, boy. Y'all should have just gave me a salad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing weight as I speak. Good God. So let's talk about the relay. Panda, let's start there. <laughs> um, the relay this year... Yes. Um, coaching Panda, uh, staff Panda, coaching relay coaching staff Panda, and and here's why. And I don't know a lot, but I know a lot because I have a lot of relationships. So I'm gonna just give it to you straight. Number one, they were ill prepared, and they were ill prepared because this happened five years ago, not 20, 2021. When they dismantled the relay project, they set this team up for failure. The relay project was created long before I came along. I was a part of the relay project as an athlete. And we had meets that we could go to throughout the, the, the entire track season that afforded us an opportunity to A, get in some, as we called it, preseason runs and some preseason relays and competitions but what it also did was give us an opportunity to have some camaraderie and some um, uh, co com uh, communion per se with other team uh, members who potentially will make the national team. When they took that away, the only connection or relationship we had with one another was when you made the team. And in between that time, that 30 day window between the national team and getting to the actual championships, you had some meets in between, and one or two of them may have had a relay, which then afforded the national team to come together and compete. That way you had a good idea of who could handle the tons in that type of environment. So by the time you got to the national championships, world championships, Olympic championships, or whatever that is, you kind of knew your lineup. Now, did it have glitches and failures absolutely you cannot predict who's going to drop a stick or not but this was the first time in united states history that four men who all run sub 10 did not make the freaking finals and they got the stick now i'm gonna tell you the truth i would have just dropped a stick if i was the anchor leg to just say we didn't get the stick around you can eat that better than you didn't make the doggone final. That's why I gave him a panda. Because if he had any sense, he could have saved his life and saved face, just dropped the stick at that point. Because you got the stick and you were comfortably 
in third place. So how do you go from third place to sixth place? You're the anchor. The anchor is supposed to be that. Anchor the team and get them to the finals. And then you put in the squad that's going to get a medal. There was no reason why those four guys shouldn't have got to stick around. So to answer your question, their failure happened when Duffy Mahoney, and I'm calling names, dismantled the relay project. He took the money away from it. He broke down all the relays that we were building up and all the meets that were coming into being to become relay meets and United States opportunities and world opportunities. When he dismantled the resources going into that, it destroyed the relays for 2021. And let me say this too. Everybody saying, oh, well, the women did well. They lost, okay? The two Olympics prior to this Olympics, they won, they ran the world record and the second fastest time in history. And then they go into this Olympics and get second. No, that is not, oh, they won a medal. They lost. That's a panda. They suck because they should have at the very least won the doggone race. They had enough talent and speed to beat Jamaica. And let me say it like this. If Jamaica knew what they were doing, they would have broke the world record, but they didn't. So the fact that they didn't know what they were doing should have gave us the confidence to beat they behind. And if I was coaching that squad, I would have won a gold medal and ran the, probably the third fastest time in history. And I said it. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> I like and all it. those relay coaches need to be fired. Yeah, I said it. They all need to be fired and Duffy need to be fired too. And I ain't gonna say Max need to be fired, but you know, he need to be fired too. <laughs> Cause he let Duffy destroy the relay project. So yeah. When heads roll, all heads roll. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if I had if that had happened on my watch, they'd have fired me. So why they ain't getting fired? How many football coaches get fired when they have bad performance? They'll get fired in the middle of the doggone football season. <laughs> about to happen we sit here and make excuses oh they didn't no 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 let's get the stick around that's the job and get to the finals that's the job now if the stick fall that's something different but when you can't get that stick around and you got qualified you got Fred Curley who went to LSU relay school you got Ronnie who went to TCU relay school you feel me I'm sorry they should have knew what to do even with the coaching, they should have known what to do. And I mean, again, I wasn't there, so I don't know all the variables. But knowing what I know, they had enough information to put a good squad out there to make it to the finals. And they had enough women. I'm, t I'm sorry. Fast times don't scare me when it comes to relays. Okay? Fast batons is what wins relays. And everybody talking about, oh, well, they had, you know, we would have beat both. If, if, let me say this. In 2012. Tyson Gay didn't have a mark. Go back and look at the track. His mark came up. If his mark hadn't come up, we would have had a better showing on third leg and we would have had a better showing on anchor leg because we would have been ahead. All right? At the end of the day, Tyson had to basically eyeball the relay pass with Justin and that threw him off on going off full speed because in practice, we were taking full speed passes and there was nothing that gave me pause to think that we couldn't run 36 seconds. And Lucius, you were there. Am I lying? Nope, you're not. You're not. The only reason why we took second place in that relay, because you look at it line for line, it happened on third leg, and that's because Tyson Gay didn't have a mark. His mark came off the track. Going in, going into the zone, we're leading. Coming out, we're not so much. So Not so much. And that's because he had to slow down to make the pass. And and to your point, you talked about practice. Not one time was there a high speed practice with this year, this year's group before before the show. It showed. It showed. It you couldn't tell me they, they had high speed practices because Fred Curley would have ran up Ronnie Baker's back in practice if they had done that. Right. So when Fred ran up Ronnie Baker's back, I was like, them boys never practiced a full speed relay pass. It, it's obvious. And let me ask this question. It was obvious that your boy on first leg wasn't ready to run. Why didn't they put Micah on first leg? Micah's the 60 meter indoor champion. Nobody beat this dude. That's all you need on the first leg is get the, get the stick off first. Anywhere in 991 at the trials. 
Boom. That so, was my so if, if, if nothing else, he should have been on anchor if he wasn't going to run. If, if nothing wasn't... else. If yeah. nothing else. Why well, was so, he not on so, anchor? so since you, uh, was there a question in there? Because I thought that sounded more like a statement. <laughs> it's, a, it's a question statement. <laughs> so, so, so the answer to your question statement is this statement. Bromel let the powers that be know that he was not ready to run. He was told by the guy that took over the relay, Wallace Spearman, that oh, you're running, even though he told Wallace, I'm not ready. So, so he, we have yeah, okay. six guys. I'm not you got ready. six guys. You got six guys. And in fact, eight, from what yeah. I understand, they didn't change the rules. So you can take eight guys to the world, uh, to the Olympic Games. And remember, so any, remember this now. Hold on a second. Anybody on the roster could run. Okay, so you got eight people. Browser could, browser could anchor the relay. Well, yeah, why not? You got eight people to pick from, and you got eight people to put in a semi and a final. You could have ran two separate teams if that's the case. Now, I know you got people out there to think, well, you should run the same four or whatever. I'm not necessarily a proponent of that because I trained everybody the same. So if whoever I put out there, including Doc Patton, who everybody was terrified to put on relays. <laughs> he was like the schlep rock of relays. I, mean, I said it. Because <laughs> every time he was on a relay, something bad would happen. <laughs> oh, you, hey, look. You were, Lauren, we were all, if we were all in the team in the final in London holding our breath. That's not lying. Listen, Lauren Williams, Lauren Williams, same thing. You know, she's the schlep rock. You know, of uh, she's, the, she's the Daphne of, uh, of relays because every time she on a relay, something go wrong, you know. But I had confidence in Doc. I had confidence in Lauren enough to put them on the relay because they showed, they gave me confidence in practice. So any relay I put out there, if I put it out there, you could best believe I had empirical data, I had film, I had numbers, and I had the confidence of all the coaches on my decision. I just didn't make decisions off the top of my head. I sat down with Andy Farrar and I sat down with Ralph Mann and we went over film and numbers. I sat down with uh, the team coaches and we went over uh, uh, relay positions and why. I could give you a legitimate reason why I wanted to put people on there. And let me put this to bed. People thought I put Bianca Knight on the relay because I wanted to coach her. I did not want to coach her, okay? I didn't want to coach her. I wanted her on the relay because she was the best third leg. And I got that because back at the pin relays earlier that year, I had her on third leg and she ate the track up. If you go back and look at that whole year, I ran the same relay from the pin relays at the doggone Olympic Games. And that's because that team ran the fastest time in the world on the pin relays track. And everybody knows that is the slowest track in the world. <laughs> But they ran the fastest time in the world on that track, beating everybody. That lineup, Tiana B, to Allison Felix, to Bianca Knight, to Carmelita Jenner. And you know the other reason why I put her on third lane? Because she was the only person that could get the stick to freaking Carmelita Jenner. The only person. And I tried several people. <laughs> so all that myth, BS, political bunk junk, I got cussed out by Bobby Kersey like a child, and I told him when he was done, if I don't get this stick around, then everything you said is true. You know what I love about Bobby Kersey? After he cussed me like a, uh, like a little kid, like a, like, like a battered child, when we broke the world record, he came and hugged me and said, man, you did a phenomenal job. That's his way of saying I'm sorry. And if it wasn't, I'll take it as such. <laughs> And I respected that because y'all have no idea the threats that I took. I was threatened by just about everybody about hey, my choices. Of I, I, I know. Absolutely. I know. Oh, you I and, know. I, you <laughs> yeah. and I sat down and had that talk. Yeah, we did. Hey, look, I I'm, got I'm, threatened. I'm, I'm not I'm, saying I'm, no I'm names. Gonna, I'm going to turn this into the, a more positive thing because JD told me the day he made the decision that they were going to break the world record, right? And oh, yeah. when the decision was made, Bobby Kersey couldn't get a hold of anybody else. So my phone rings. And I got the first earful. And so I got on the phone. I, I called I called you. 
I called Amy Dean. I called Sandy Snow. I said, somebody's take this man's phone call. <laughs> just, <laughs> I, right? I said, so I just got half cussed out. So y'all about to get it. So somebody's take this man's phone call. And then the day of the meet, like we sent him into the, we sent him into the call room. He grabbed me. He said, come on, man, we're going over here in this tent. We're going to pray over this. They about to break the world record. We said a little prayer. We're back in our tent and watched him on 40.8. And he looked at me and go, I told you. So he called it. After I did my cartwheel. <laughs> yep. After, after I did a cartwheel. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Well, too, that, that seems like the perfect exit for JD, right? We yeah, can't right. no better than that. that <laughs> no, was, it does not. That was a great mic drop. I love it. That was a, <laughs> mm-hmm. Told you so. Well, well, we definitely, with our question, we had to bring the panda back on the show. Oh, yeah, some some point. Yeah, oh no, he, yeah, he, he coming back. Yeah, he we might back. have to just have a panda segment in the middle of the track season. Maybe at oh, the end God. of it, panda segment. Y'all don't know what y'all getting yourself into because the panda have no filter. No, we're we're here for that. We're, we're very we're here aware. for it. I was like, we're we're very aware of that. Imagine, yeah. I, know, I know I've gotten a panda before, and, and I don't even know why. I, I, I had to I, I had to eat you up a couple times, man. I had to eat yeah, you up. So up. Like, I got during, the, during the NCAA season. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I got a panda because we ran two fifty nine. That's all I, I remember that. Be, 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 I got a panda because the rest of my team should have been better. Right? Like, a, like a, I thought we were pretty good. But nope, they better have been better. You ran 258. Panda. So you know what? I took my panda like a man. I, I wasn't getting out of it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Hey, I, no I'm, I'm just baby. glad. No I'm, glad that, I'm glad the panda wasn't around when I was competing. You should be. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> oh Lord. I, now, I it, got a panda. It, it, I got a panda after almost every fifteen hundred. No. Listen, no, you were you were king panda of the fifteen hundred in the in the. Uh, anybody that put a hat on backwards and wait, I just wanted to know, Chris, was there oh, any geez. moment? Was there any moment in the decathlon that you said, you know what, I'm going to actually try to run this fifteen? So here's the worst part. So first off. First off, obviously, one time I truly ran it because I ran a 14-second PR to win a friggin' medal. But okay. here's the worst part. I wish that I had been good and was being lazy. That's the worst part is that, like, I just really, really sucked at it <laughs> for the vast majority of my <laughs> career. And, and you know the worst part about this is, like, when you're so good at all the other things, you just, I like, I set myself up for public failure so many times. I was like, if I would just suck a little bit at some of these things, I would go into the 1500 like sixth and nobody would notice. But when you right. start the 1500 winning or second, it's like, everybody's like, come on, Chris, come I'm like, listen, y'all, y'all are praying for people to learn how to breathe underwater. Like, <laughs> I don't have what you want me to have. <laughs> right? Like for 95% for of my career, I can honestly tell you if I had had the mental wherewithal that I had in the end. So when I ran that 438, if we took that guy and went back and ran all my other 1500s all over, I still, my PB going into that race still would have been like 447. Right? Like I just wasn't good at it. You know, like the 438 was like, listen to me, y'all. <laughs> It, in your life, every single one of us has done something when, when you finish it, you're like, that was perfect. Like, I can't do that any better. <laughs> I promise you. With oh. 300 meters to go, I was like, this is where you have to sprint. I took three steps and was like, I am sprinting. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is it. I was like, I, now I understand. Like, I have run fast for the other 1,200 meters. Like, this is it. There, like, I don't have a gear because I left that over there. Like this is hold on for 300 meters, right? And when I finished, I was like, listen, I hope that was good enough to win because I promise you, I, I ran 438, I think 438.70. I promise you 438.65 would have put me in, in the grave, not the hospital, the grave. <laughs> like I was oh absolutely I so appreciate you telling empty. me because I ain't gonna lie, man. I used to say, Man, we good all the way to the 15. Up, Chris going to the back. He gonna put that hat on backwards and we good. <laughs> and, and you know what used to, well, this is what used to piss me off, right? People used to compare me and Dan O'Brien. I was like, that dude's PR is 432. Yeah. He's he jogging. 
Yeah, he's surviving. The <laughs> same guy. Like he's a gazelle in the back, just chilling. I'm the buffalo that just trying not to get eaten. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen, I I, I cannot explain this to you any better. Right. I was I was ninety eight percent fast twitch muscle fiber in those days. Oh <laughs> there was God. no slow twitch. Hashtag fat <laughs> AD. <has> been- <laughs> I know. Thank you. Yeah, on that we're going to sign you all because this Absolutely. is going okay. going round and round. But my final two words to you are so frogs. Yeah, so. man. I hear you're at <laughs> TCU. Congratulations. Thank you very and, um, much. When you have a chance to go up into the Hall of Fame, I'm up on one of them walls. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And yeah, you're I, about to go I, on I, another I, wall, too. Yeah, you're really? going on another wall, from what I hear. Yeah. Oh, that, I, can, I, can you give me a kind fa- Can you do me a kind favor? Yes. Can you just get them to spell my name right <laughs> on the uh, banner <laughs> up there on the track? <laughs> I, I have no that. idea who that I guy is. That. <laughs> they totally got my name spelled wrong. I mean, really. Like, Wh- really? Which name? My first name. First name. It has an H in it. Like, there's no H in my name. And I'm like, <laughs> who is that guy? I don't know who that is. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I looked it up because I was like, is there a different one? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that when I went to the track. I was like, is that somebody else? That's funny. That's so. That funny. deserves a panda. And, and, yeah, oh, I did. I, I went up there as the panda and put a panda on it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. On that note, sir, get yourself home safely. Thank you so oh, much yeah. for your time. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you around soon. You. Okay. Later, man. All right. Bye. Wow, that was fun. That Bye. was fun. I didn't know it was gonna oh. be that much fun. I oh. Oh, unfortunately <laughs> I, I think we all did yeah 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 absolutely that was my initiation on that one here, well here we go, just for you jd oh my gosh so <laughs> continuing the chaos yeah speaking of fun yeah right per usual the, the chaos that and and fun that we we know and love so well um again those three letters cfb college football I mean, I wish I had some tea to sip right now. <laughs> I, I wish that my industry allowed me to, to profit financially off of my skill set. <laughs> I told y'all <laughs> what it was. And, you know, what is it? Is it? It wasn't 100% of my chaos picks came through, but it was 75%. And I'm told that in the world, of like the mafia and gambling and all of that. If you hitting at 75%, like you're a superstar. So, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Take them. <laughs> uh, for the record, Notre Dame without question proved exactly what I said after week one. They were the most Fugazi team in the country. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. And I, and I, and I, this is not one I really want to claim, but I, I told you the Florida game was a problem. I, I told you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you wish that in the you, you put that in the No, I did not. Yeah, like, you, you, didn't, you didn't wish for I it, but you put that just, in the air. Why can I just be right? I mean, you were definitely I'm, right. I'm, I'm appreciative right. of the fact that you were right. <laughs> oh, wow. But I'm but, just saying, I, just, I saw it coming. Yeah. But, but, but can so, we, so can let's we, talk we, about this weekend. Can, but, no, actually, because this is, again, this is part of my my problem with this whole system. Can we can we hold to that Florida issue for a second? Because right now, after that, at three and two, the SEC members that are the Florida Gators are number twenty. They not even out the top twenty. Like, really? They three and two. Everyone else in the top 25 is either undefeated or one loss. So what is it about the Gators other than their conference affiliation that lands them in the top 20? I'm, I'm really not sure why you're asking me this question because I'm I not would, asking it to you. I, I, I'm just saying, I'm just saying uh-huh. it out loud. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to say out loud is this, is that, you know, what is Kentucky ranked? Let's start there. Yeah. 16. Okay. So Kentucky 16th, Alabama's first, those are their two losses. There's your answer. See, it's just simple math. Simple math. 
So like, well, we can that's, make the yeah, play. Yeah, it's revisionist up, but, history though, because Kentucky wasn't ranked when they beat them. Okay, but they're ranked now. And that's right. The, that, but that's the fugazi of it. That's the okay, point. Look, I didn't. Wait, I didn't. You asked me for a reason. I gave you one that I think is pretty simple. All right. Because uh, because that's going to be their reasoning. All right. Because Kentucky wasn't ranked. They beat the 11th ranked team. Okay. So now they jump into the top 20 at 16th. And so because they're the 16th ranked team and they beat Florida by a little bit at home, that makes Florida the 20th ranked team, who the other loss happens to be to the, what we would consider the best team in the country. It's simple. It's very simple for me. But, it, but see, but the conspiracy theorists of the world, because you're in the SEC, because of this and that and the other, and, and, and you might be right. But at the end of the day, if you talk to the people that made the decisions, that's why they're right there. All right. I think that, I, I don't I don't think that's very hard. You can't really argue with that. Can you? Well, well, the, the the panda of the weekend to, to keep the JD theme going is clearly, and and you know, Lucia, Lamar has uh, Notre Dame as the most fugazi team. No, it's Arkansas was the most fugazi <laughs> team. It's Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. the panda of the weekend. <laughs> Did anybody outside of like let, let's just for one minute let's pull back all the shenanigans and ask a real question, okay? On this panel, knowing what you know historically about college football, did anybody on this panel think anything different was going to happen to Arkansas? I thought they'd score. I, yeah, I thought they yeah. score. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 okay. I thought they might got beat by 14, 21, you know, but not like not that bad. See, here's the thing. I think Arkansas is better than they showed that in that game. I do think they are. I think Georgia obviously was, in my opinion, like I said before, I thought the coaching was going to be a big part of this. The coach, the Georgia coach staff is a lot more experienced. They're at home, and they showed it, in my opinion. You know, I, I Arkansas is better than they showed it. But I never thought they had a chance to beat Georgia. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, I think they were going to win the game, but – I'm just oh telling you something like this. What, what was Arkansas ranked before the game? Four or five. Okay. No, they this weren't that. What, this, yeah, yeah, it was something like that. They weren't four or five. They weren't. Oh, they okay. Were, I'm they, sorry. Were they were like eight. Wait, they, they dropped five spots and so they were eight. Yes. Okay. So, so they were eight Public in man. the country, right? They right. were eight in the country, right? If you had asked me, could they beat any of the other 19 teams in the top 20, I would have told you no. Oh, that's my point. I, have you seen them play? This yes, is my I, point. Yes. Okay, so forget the game where they got dump trucked by a better team. I'm telling you, they didn't play anybody. And to be ranked yes. eighth was 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 ridiculous because they weren't the eighth best yes. team in the country. Not being the eighth best team in the country, you just basically said they're not they're not, they're not a top twenty team. Guess what? They're not. We'll find out. And and wait two weeks from now, you'll be like, I can't believe anybody ever ranked them. I'm not going to say that, but. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, you, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. But Arkansas has an outside chance of finishing the season at six and six. Jeez. Okay. They're just. Not, it's not a diss to Arkansas. They're not that good yet. Okay. I think they can be good. They're just young and they're not experienced yet. And when they start playing the meat and potatoes of the SEC schedule, they're good, like they will not be better than the teams they play. Well, here, here. So, so since we're in the middle of this, Arkansas is at Ole Miss this weekend. They gonna beat Ole Miss? No. Lucius, I, I think it'll be. I think it'll be a good game. Well, don't know. Uh, so, so chaos alert, right? That that's what we're doing. Uh, I, I wouldn't even consider this a chaos game, but the but the biggest game of the week with the most implications is Penn State number four currently at number three Iowa. That that's the game with all the implications. Now, and who did I tell you was was Fugazi as hell on that side of the Big Ten? You said Penn Iowa. State. Well, you no, said Penn on State the other too, side. No, right. But I'm saying that oh, whole oh, side. On, on, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you. Whole, so, like so that you, whole so, side. So you think both of those teams are fugazi? That's what you're saying. From a national perspective, because remember the question was I don't even I, what fugazi means. So you think both of those teams are overrated. Oh, you know that's what, what fugazi means. Okay. 
<laughs> when the question was asked, I said I didn't think there was a Big Ten team that had a legitimate shot at the college football playoff. That's what I said, right? Yeah, and and, right. and and Penn State is going to be vaulted into that conversation as they are right now because they're good. Look, they're about to beat probably by a fair amount a top five team by rankings. Y- yeah. So Penn State I mean, is substantially better than Iowa in every single position. Right, but and and that and so this is this is my issue. We're still super early in the season. And whoever wins this game is going to get the, I beat a top four team in the country bump. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, eh, but should you be any, should any of you be ranked at all right now? Cause clearly every week we learn a so, lot. So, so I, I'm just listening to you. Cause I'm clear. I know nothing about college football. So educate me. <laughs> Who should be the top five teams in the country? There should be no rankings until, until Halloween. Okay. So no, that's I, not my question. I'm not oh, asking okay. about rankings. I'm asking you two super experts. I'll make it easy. Who are the top four teams in the country in your mind? What did I, what did I say to you last week? I said Alabama is the only team that actually has, actually has a legitimate ranking. After that, two through 15 is a toss-up. I mean, I largely agree with that, depending on the circumstances. Where that was, where that was playing very, all of that. That was, that was very well orchestrated. Way. Here's the thing. You know that I have no problem standing on my own opinion. What I'm saying to you is this is one of those bizarre years where there's not monster teams out there. There's one. Alabama is Alabama normal. Clemson is not. Clemson Oregon at the is, is not. Untrained, exactly. Which is amazing. Right? So, like, look, Oklahoma is not. Right. The, the, the prototypical who's going to be a power group. I mean, I guess I'm going to land on Ohio State being a top five team, I think. But I'm not sure. I wouldn't bet money on that. This is just a weird year to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you some uh, what I think chaos alerts. I think Oklahoma going to Texas is a chaos alert. Facts. It yeah. always is. Yeah. But, but but can I can I can I say this? Because I figured that game would come into play, and 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 that game was obviously on my chaos alert. Can can I say this? Because I, I I do love to uh to troll my my Texans. Um, the the collegiate state of Texas football is horrible right now. For for a state not, that claims not good. For a state that claims that they are you know the kings, the literal, you know. Like they they believe that Texas football in all forms is like the pinnacle of the sport. And the whole state just got a bunch of bad football teams right now. Texas very well might beat Oklahoma. It's the rivalry game. It wouldn't shock me at all. But my God, SMU might be the best team in Texas. They really might. And we won't know because they're not going to end up playing any of the other teams for real. But Texas, as a state, your laws need fixing, and so does your football. I don't know well, I mean, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it too. Um, the state of Florida football is not very good either. So. You know. And after the state of Florida football, let's, let's keep it real. The, f- the football in this state is worse than football in, in Texas. Stop. It is. Ooh. It is. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good battle, though. I, no, no, I, there, there, no, no, no. The, the the total state of Florida is worse than Texas. It's not even close. I, I mean, you're not wrong. Clear, it's, clear, it's clear, not, clear, there's not good clear, football. In you guys have made it clear that Florida is not a top twenty-five team or a top twenty team in your mind, right? They are clearly the best team in the state of Florida. Oh, by a lot. You exactly. well, that's true. That's true. The state of the football in the state of Florida, another great high school football state, is not very good right now. There needs what, to be an FBI probe into how Florida State got to be so bad. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> I mean, let, then, like, like, okay, just, let's let this wash over you. I, I when Bobby Bowden was there, they were top, they finished top three in the country 10 straight years in a row. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sir, you, you I, I know that's not what you meant. But you you stumbled upon the answer, I think, in your question. If if there was an FBI probe, we'd probably get a lot of answers as to how that happened. Wow. <laughs> Eddie at its best. So anyway, 
<laughs> so wow. yeah, we so we all have chaos alert on the Oklahoma Texas situation, right? Um, and and the the Penn State Iowa game again, they're they're number three and number four, so it's not really a chaos game, but that game is the most consequential game. So, so like so, in my my thing with that game is I I happen to think Iowa's a little better than y'all think they are, but I, I, do I yeah. think going to be Penn State? No, I no I don't, but I do think that that game will be a lot more competitive than people give it credit for. O- o- Oregon did what Oregon does; they went into Palo Alto and found a way to lose the game. And see, in Stanford, said who they they got uh, who they get this week. I forgot who they get this week, but they the, oh they get Arizona Arizona State. I think they get this week. Yeah. So but, there's a team right. Arizona State is. Four and one. They're not. They're not great, but they're way better than people think they are. Shout out to Herm Edwards. Yep. They the they, they are way better than people think they are. They play to win the games. Hello, we play to win the game. But to uh, to are we are we meant to we're we're meant to to wrap the 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 chaos is all of football, right? Yeah. So the 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 chaos the true chaos of the current state of football. Ain't even on the college football scene, though it might be soon. And the and the you know if uh, if Arkansas was the biggest panda of last weekend on the field, Urban Meyer, come on, bro, bro, come on, my God, what is going on? What is going on? Like people thought when that story broke that that it was embarrassing. But ultimately, you know, not a big of a deal. No, it's a huge deal. He's going to get fired over it, most likely. And you know no, what that he's means? not. They've already said he's not going to get fired. I get oh, fired. Okay. To California he goes. I saw that meme. Oh, just, just, here, that here, here's the thing. Like, if <laughs> Urban Meyer, he doesn't have to get fired, he'll just leave. Whatever. Yes. This situation, <laughs> the, Jag- the Jaguar situation is over. And I will not be shocked if at the end of all of this, USC. I'm just, I'm putting that out there. I won't be shocked. We'll see. But right. that that whole story is just ridiculously dumb. Like you, you know, you you it's because you brought up USC, it reminded me of again, this is the ultimate panda. There was this story that kept reverberating that uh Eric Bianami was going to be the next head coach at USC. And it was said matter of factly like it was a done deal. I heard that. And heard when that. interviewed, Eric Bieniemy said, I literally have no idea where that came from. The guy who was the AD at USC is the guy that fired me and the rest of the staff at Colorado. That's right. I laughed so hard I had stuff coming out of my nose. <laughs> That's right. Right, because we already know that they make stuff up and run with it in, in the media sometimes, right? My man literally called out all of the media. He's like, look, y'all are just making this up. Like, this is trash and garbage, and I'm not really sure where it came from. Right. <laughs> and I just laughed. I was like, he just trolled all of the media. Because they were like, they were running with this, like they were breaking news stories. Like it, was, like it was eminent. You know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea. No, it would have been a... It, it, <laughs> For them, it would be a great idea. If I'm Eric Bieniemy, listen, let me tell you something. If you're an offensive coordinator, you are as good as the quarterback that you work with, right? True. You know why everybody thinks Josh McDaniel is really good at his job? Because he coached Tom Brady for all of those years. I think Eric Bieniemy is a great offensive mind. He also has, like, Megatron playing quarterback. Right. Like he's got the guy that is not playing the same game as anybody else. Yep. Like if you watch Patrick Mahomes play quarterback, the God's honest truth is when you watch it, you're hundred percent sure that it's easy. Like that everybody should be able to do it. And you don't understand why other people aren't better at it. He never really gets hit. He makes almost every throw, right? Whenever there's something that needs to happen for the most part, he's successful. Everybody was shocked. He threw an interception in the fourth quarter last week. Cause guess what? It's the first time it's ever happened. Right. Like, like at the end of the day, like he's not playing the same game as everybody else is playing. And Eric Bieniemy is his coach. Like I'm not going anywhere. Andy Reid's my boss, and 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 Patrick Mahomes is my quarterback. I'm not going anywhere. Why? Check out, 
Now, now that's interesting, and this is so not the direction we were going with this conversation. <laughs> but you do realize that what Lamar has done there, and I'm not necessarily mad at, it, is he has said that the skill set of Mr. Bienemy is much more about who he's working with than his ability to develop it elsewhere. Now, you're not allowed to say that, sir. You, you're not supposed to say things like that because Eric Bieniemy apparently is like the most disrespected coach in the NFL. He should have been a boss 10 times over by now. But based on the way they hire, he should have been a boss 10 times over. But that has nothing to do with what he should do. I'm, I, I'm saying, I'm like, I'm with you. I'm like, hey, why would he leave? Like, that's all, I'm like, why would he leave? And, but I think what you, what you speak to there is what at any, any sport at any level, you're, you're, as a coach, you're only as good as the talent you have to work with. Let's be real. And Tom Brady made our man look pretty good. Uh, who's the, who's the old coordinator in Tampa right now? Oh, uh, Byron Leftwich. Byron yeah. Leftwich. Didn't, didn't hear much about him until, until, until the GOAT showed up, right? Oh, no, you did. But you know why? Because he was the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger. Okay, so, so, same deal. Exactly, right? Yeah, same been, deal. That's the thing. If you're the offensive but, coordinator, your quarterback but, matters. Exactly. It does. Absolutely. Ask Josh McDaniel what it was like when he went to Denver. And so, and so, I, and I'm on a problem. Saying Tebow can't game. throw. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he won a playoff game. Yeah, no. Tim Tebow, that was, that was wrong. Peyton Manning's still wrong for that. <laughs> yeah, Peyton Manning ran that man out the sport. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look, I mean, yeah. like you, like you win a playoff game, and then now you can't make an NFL roster. Come on, come on, Peyton. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna lift up the state of Texas here because the Cowboys run another football game, Clyde. Yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly care less. They, they won. Yeah, hey, I, I hey, all, all was great care less. Win. They, Browns and the Bengals won last weekend, so hey. Yeah, listen, it's it's the NFL. I mean, the Jets and the Giants won last week. There you right? go. So, I mean, so, so Lamar's happy. There you I, go. I thought Armageddon was upon us. Exactly. The Jets, the Jets and the Giants won meaningful overtime football games on yeah. the same day. Yeah. So so before before I get blown up with all my Texan slash and I when I say Texan I mean people from the state, not the Houston Texans, which are barely a football team. <laughs> They I'm should probably, be they should be changed to the Houston football team. With something. Or or go back they're, to the Oilers or something. You know, Oilers, Oilers, you know, work. But listen, <laughs> all my cowboy fans, we get it. It's like the 26th year you're going to the Super Bowl and it doesn't happen. <laughs> listen, just if they're still good after Thanksgiving, going into Christmas, if the Cowboys are still good mid-December then you can hit me up and send me the texts and the tweets and Lucius can talk crazy to me on on the screen oh no I'm not talking crazy <laughs> no, I, no, want... I know I'm it's saying it. I'm giving you permission I am not no I'm not a cowboy fan we're not doing I, I know you're not but I'm just saying you could you could call me out I will I don't know look they can win the Super Bowl I'm not saying anything I'm just <laughs> letting you know well there's no there's no there's right, no, no worry world. about that I, there's I, look, no world where the Cowboys win. I, you know, I have been on this planet for was soon to be 62 years, and I just found out three months ago that my mother's a Dallas Cowboys fan, and I just I'm, <laughs> I'm like, how, first of all, how did I not know this? I think she hid it for me for me on purpose. I think she did. No. Cowboy fans are the most overhyped, melodramatic. We're awesome in September every year. Every year, like, and my mom's not that kind of a Dallas Cowboy fan, clearly, because I didn't know she was a fan. But, um, <laughs> my, my younger brother and my niece, oh boy, bro, let, we, let, let me let me we, let, we, this, hey, we this are a true story. <laughs> we are this is a true story. This really happened. This really happened, and I and we can move on to the next thing. I am not, I'm not a, a fan or a hater of Dak Prescott, I think he's talented, good QB, top 15. QB is good. When he had that horrible ankle injury, people in Texas were hitting me up, telling me had he not messed his ankle up, one, he was going to be the MVP. And if somehow he could come back before the end of the season, he'd still win the MVP. 
That's how Looney Tunes some cowboy fans are. Some cowboy fans. Are. Okay, not so I will say this: when Dak got hurt, he was balling out of control. He wasn't gonna. He was not gonna win the MVP because they weren't gonna be good enough. But but I he will was, say, you have to give the man. Credit. I will say well, statistically, yeah. he was balling. And if you watch, if you watch what he's doing now, like this is the funny part: they got on paper one of the best receiving cores in all of football. Yeah, right? two they, or three. they got right. They got, a top, they got a top five running back. Right. Yes. They got. They probably got a top seven or eight offensive line. Yes. And if it's not for Dak, Dak Prescott, they don't. They haven't won a game. Like he's still having to play hero ball, which makes no sense. It tells you that there's that, look, there's a fly in that ointment, right? Like the Cowboys aren't that good because your quarterback should not have to be playing hero football with as many weapons as they have. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna stay out of that one. <laughs> stay out of that one. Wow. Well, I mean, look. The, Unless the, the best, the best cowboy line, defense, the, the Chiefs are no better, right? They, Unless the Chiefs figure out how to play defense, like they got to score forty-two a game to win. Hey, the 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 best the best cowboy line I've heard this year. <laughs> Again, shout out to my man, uh, uh, Emmanuel Acho. Emmanuel Acho said the Cowboys are. <laughs> I can't even get it out. <laughs> almost the best way to describe the Cowboys are almost barely. They're almost good enough to beat the defending Super Bowl champs and barely good enough to beat the worst teams in the in the league. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Disrespect. Hey. So, oh man. Well, um <laughs> alluding to more chaos. This is this is a chaotic uh episode. Um <sighs> Lamar, keep your quarters in your pocket. Because this carousel is spinning, I still. Hey, listen. Somebody raided a video arcade, emptied all the machines for quarters, <laughs> and is secretly dropping quarters in the co- folks. I, I was a Division One college coach for twenty three years. So Lucius has been a, has been a Division One college coach for longer than that. Neither one of us has seen anything like this oh no it's wild and it's not over i I made okay i made the joke about coaches in the transfer portal right i had a college coach call me this week and ask to be put in the portal oh my god (laughs) hey i had a college coach call me and ask me can he transfer at the semester hey because he knows there's going to be some jobs open and he's ready to transfer at this point, what? the portal would be a more efficient way than these hiring practices. I can Seriously. say that much. Seriously. So, so we got more return to Alabama State? Yes. L- listen, Richie Bean, great job, sir. Maury, that's a hell of a place, man. You're, you're going to be great down there. That, that, that one and LaRon Bennett to UVA yeah. made me smile in these last couple of days. I'm very proud of those two dudes right there. And then uh, Garfield Ellenwood to Maryland. That happened. Yeah. Burger, the Long Beach State. That's a big one right there. Yeah, that might have been, the you know, the, the one that was like, wait, everybody's like, wait, what happened? What happened? Black <laughs> Burger is on the West Coast again. Yeah. Long Beach State. You know, that's, that's, a, that's actually a sneaky good placement. Yeah. If, if, if we figure out the Maryland throws coach to now the it's not the Ohio State throws coach. We figured that one out yet? Oh. No, I forgot. I know what happened. Oh. I just don't know who it is. So that now, so you know, to 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 rewind all of that, there no, none of those places that they left have been filled. So. There, there's some JUCO positions open. There's D1 positions open. There's D2 positions open. It's, it's, it's the wildest summer ever, a.k.a. fall now. <laughs> Seriously. Listen, the sprint coach at North Carolina left to go be the head coach at Ball State. They still have not replaced him officially at North Carolina. 
I, I that's, mean, that's true. We are almost like we're we are rapidly approaching Halloween, and we have Power Five programs and Power Five kids without coaches. That like that that just doesn't happen. You know, like that happens once every three or four years. We're talking about like seven or eight or nine of those program jobs now. Do we have a head coach in New Mexico State yet? No. Not 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 to anyone's knowledge. No. <laughs> I mean, hello? There's still a jumps job or assistant job open at Campbell. Well, there's a whole lot of jobs open at Campbell, I think. There's I, I I mean, I'm just saying, like, in no world in the middle of October can you show up with a resume and actually apply for, like, 15 jobs that are open. Yeah. True facts. True facts. It's just, I, it's just bizarre, guys. There'll, there'll be more coming Maryland, in the weeks to come. There, or Ohio State. Be more coming. Travis Coleman went to Ohio State? Correct. Okay. So Maryland's got to throw his job that will be hiring soon. Transfer portal. Mm-hmm. Any, any coaches want to get in the portal? <laughs> Actually, I mean, we, we should get yeah. into that at a later date. I bet you if a transfer portal existed, like a good 25, 30% of the coaching population would like volunteer to sign up to go into the portal. To, oh, yeah, you're low that. You are literally lowballing that one. Yes. No, no, no. But because it has to work the same way the portal actually works, right? Like if you put yourself in there, right, you lose your job. Can cut your can cut your money right now. So you know, right. people may not exactly dance go in so, there. Feel me? So that's going to end that whole conversation right there because that twenty five percent just became one, right. <laughs> and that one percent is the are the people that know they're about to get fired anyway. So it's right, joking. that's yeah, the disgruntled. Yeah. Exactly. That's funny. I, I'm just like, in all seriousness, so Lucius, I, I, and I don't mean this as an old joke. I will defer to your experience though. Have you ever seen anything approaching this? No, it's unheard of. Like, usually by mid August, the dust is settled. And, mm-hmm. you know, every now and then you get one guy that shows up in September or late August, but that, it's all, it, it's guys, it's October. And there's a lot of not just jobs, but good jobs. And the problem you have because the good jobs are going to take people from other good jobs. So this is going to go on for quite some time. Okay, like, I mean, so we, we, we can't say names. We can't say names, right? But, but there's a throws job. There's a throws coach in the Big 12 that is rumored to be leaving the Big 12 to go to the Big 10 right. in October. And so, that means so, there's going to be a throws position open at a major institution with a, like, look, that group is loaded. If you, if you look on paper, the throws group in Oklahoma is loaded. Oop. <laughs> Sorry. Let's do it. Anyway. I, all I'm saying <laughs> is this. There's a whole lot of really good kids. They're still in turmoil, and it makes no sense to me. So... Anyway, um, I didn't mean to say the school. I'm very sorry, <laughs> but I'm just saying that's 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 example of one. Like we just talked about New Mexico State. If you're a kid on the team, what? Who do you go to if, if you're a freshman at New Mexico State? Right? Who are you going to to ask questions that every there's freshman? A, there's, there's an interim coach. There's an interim coach. There's there's not there's not there's nobody around. So, so yeah. here's a serious question: At what point are programs going to be like? Hey, you know what? We're not going to fill this position. We're going to wait until next May. At what point does do administrators like, hey, you know what? Work with what you got till May. We'll figure it out. So some of the smaller programs are going to do that because it saves them money. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's just like the fact that there are still jobs opening, let alone open, opening in October. Like we already know, right? The process to hire a coach in general at Institution X, the process to hire a track and field coach is about a month, yeah. right? Post, mm-hmm. acquire interviews. I mean, acquire uh, resumes, pick who you're going to interview, interview said, interview said, interview said, make hire, then get coach on campus. 
that is in a quick scenario, that's a month. So now you're talking about kids at programs who aren't going to have a coach in place till Thanksgiving break. What? Yep. It's, and, and the coaching carousel being what it is, right? Let's just, okay, look, we can all extrapolate. What's that going to make the transfer portal look like? Oh, on fire. As if, again, as if it wasn't already. Again, right? Again. God. So I just, I don't know how we fix it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, it's, it just is. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a matter of fixing it. It's just a matter of letting it, letting it play out. And because there were so many jobs, there were, there were actually more, I think, qualified. There was more jobs than were qualified bodies. And so that's the problem. It's, uh, this one is wild, y'all. This one is wild. It is, it is indeed, sir. It is indeed. What's next, um, Ju? Well, so I feel so Sean Denard went to UCLA from CSUN, so there's another throws job opening. And then Nate Scales went to Columbia. So now That's there's right. another job opening in the jumps multis world. Um, so as much as we said there was a theme to the uh, the openings early on, now it's just a skew and there's just jobs like you could almost say it's a throws theme now but at the same time every job distance you know just looking at that conversation happen is like what you can still so. be the sprint coach at university of north carolina the job's still open <laughs> I, I, and i think i think cornell still has a job open too unless they unless i know they're getting close mm -hmm. to if they have yet so that's going to cause no but yeah, no yeah. Sheesh. Sheesh. It's, it's just it's just crazy it is is Syracuse and Pitt and Pitt, Pittsburgh still has a job open, and because the young man from Reuben went to Kennesaw State, so shout out to Reuben as well. It, is the Air Force job filled yet officially? Nope. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Anyhow. We can't I just don't understand how jobs checking. are open for like eight weeks, though. That's the part that's killing me. Well, that's 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 a government job, so that's going to take. Oh. oh, man. Yeah, but I mean, the, like this, there's so much that goes behind it. Whether it's COVID related and they're they're coming in and out of freezes, whether it's people like making decisions to not make a decision, literally, and you know the whole and I don't, this isn't meant to be sounding demeaning or downplayed or anything like that. People really evaluating their life decisions. Those who want to work and don't want to work or how they want to work from now on. And, you know, we, we see the empty tables and empty rooms at hotels and restaurants because people don't want to come back to work. It's the same thing here, you know, and we're just not seeing all of it in, under the microscope or in the limelight, but there's a whole bunch. So, man, man, oh man. Well, to give you your last douse of chaos, Sir Lucius, step up, sir. You are in the line of rapid fire. <laughs> so, no suspect behavior out of you tonight, big league. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, it, it was I really it I looked at these suspect behavior tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow, anywho. All right. Are you ready, sir? Absolutely, ma'am. I am. All righty. Did you get a gift for National Coaches Day? No, I did not. Florida Gators, you heard it here. Step up. Don't get <laughs> fired on your day off. That, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the very least, Grant. I okay. got, got a lot of shout outs, but no, no, gifts. no gifts. Yeah. Well, that's gift enough, true. So. Yes, it is. Um, have you started bowling nights again? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm not bowling very well, but I am. <laughs> There's a ball that's going down the lane that hits yeah. maybe some pins. Just, just, you know, it's just one of those situations. I'm sure you've been there. It comes off my hand. It feels great. Gets to the end. I'm like, what in the world is that? <laughs> <laughs> you should have just closed your eyes. <laughs> exactly. I, may, I, may, I may try that next week. Just close my eyes and throw mm -hmm. as hard as I can. Or go lefty. It's always yeah. my cure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, just just go just go three dots over from the center and bowl straight. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, okay. For, you, you can do a chill. Yeah. Okay, four forty-eight. So, yeah. <laughs> what is four forty-eight? What is that? Stop it. Anyways, three forty-eight. Three forty-eight. I'm sorry. Um, I say the word green. You say. One more time. I say the word green. Green. You say green, like the color. Yes. Money. There you go. Okay. I was. I thought that's what you would say, but. I wanted to see if there was an off the wall answer that I would get. Um, have you watched an episode of Squid Games yet? No, um, but MJ, my son, told me tonight that he wants me to start. He wants me to check it out. So I'll check it out this weekend. Got it. Yeah. Um, are you going with a cupcake or a slice of cake? Um, depending on the flavor involved, but typically a slice of cake. Got it. Um, Who's winning the Super Bowl? <laughs> you know he's going to say the Browns. <laughs> Stop it. Wow, really? That's what I was going to say? Yes. No, it was not. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to win the Super Bowl. Got it. <laughs> um, candy corn or nah? Nah. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite Halloween candy? The little pumpkins. That's like a candy corn, but in a pumpkin. It's not candy corn. It's pumpkin. <laughs> it's wax. <laughs> I like them. I'm not. I'm not just. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so actually, if if let's see, but it's not a ha Halloween candy. Like my favorite candy is M and M's, peanut M and M's, right? But like nobody gives that for Halloween. Well, they give out the five that come in that snack bag. Yeah, that no, no <laughs> not allowed. So. It's the little pumpkins. Like I, I, I didn't know that was considered candy corn, but candy corn is like the, the yellow and orange stuff. That's candy corn. That's a pumpkin. It's a different deal. So okay. <laughs> anyhow, you have survived my rounds <laughs> oh. of rapid fire. Gentlemen, oh my lord. It's a different deal. <laughs> candy corn oh. is two different things. Oh my god. What, 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 what you guys got for me? What, what is your favorite JD moment in history on the track? Oh, it has to be um, when they laid on the ground, when they laid on the track. <laughs> that's like, you can't, like, you, that's just it. You know, but because that's so JD, right? Like, y'all not running this race, right? You know, so that's by far, that's my favorite JD moment. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I don't want to get you in trouble, so we'll, we'll, we'll exclude collegians. But in, in all of your days of coaching, if there was another athlete out there that you could have coached, that you would have enjoyed coaching, that you never coached, who would that one athlete have been? Damn just it. like you, just based on their skill set, you would have loved to coach them. Not because they were coached poorly or, or great, just you know, an admiration of their talents and your talents mixed together, you think would have been great. Um, you know, that that's besides me in the hundred, of course, that's a terrible. <laughs> that um, is not, why is that a terrible question? You say that no matter what I ask. <laughs> well, then maybe you should make your questions better. I think the question was a great one. Okay. So your great question, the answer to your great question is that um, somebody that I would have loved to have coached that you know, so somebody I would have loved to have coached, not because I don't think I could have made him any better or any worse, just because I just I loved the who they were and how they conduct themselves as Quincy Watts. Why was the question bad? I think that was a great question and answer. Thank you, sir. And that would have been a pretty interesting one, too. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have coached you because you were too you were too stubborn. So. You are such a liar. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say this out loud so that everybody hears it. This man I, says, mm -hmm. and I don't disagree with him. This man says, if he had coached me, I would have ran under 10 and under 650. Really? That's what I believe, anyway. Yeah. I mean, and, I, I, and I'll be honest with you, all the numbers say he's right. Did. Quincy Watts. Nice. Well, so I gotta imagine he had to be fun to coach, regardless, right? 
Yeah, that's my point. Like he could <laughs> like, like, like what like, can't Quincy do? Right. There's no fear there. He's gonna come show up every day, do everything you ask him to do. Um, yeah. The the other guy that I would have loved to have coached because I just I just think he was an absolute rock star. He just he just managed the injuries all of his life was freaking by Sean Nella because he's the same guy, right? Oh the same guy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And Only then I could, faster. I think either one of them were coached poorly. I just think it would have been fun to coach him. That's all. Yeah, like that wasn't to take a shot. Any, just so we're clear, Western world, that was not to take a shot at anybody else's coaching. No, just people that have been fun to coach, yeah. Got it. Well, well played, well played, sir. And no questionable. See, I told you it wasn't going to be questionable. I appreciate that because, you know, <laughs> you were on a roll there for a minute. I was like, wow. <laughs> that funny juice. Yeah. So, um, we will move back into our regularly scheduled heartbeat props and get shout outs from each of the tiles here. Um, I'd like to start first um, in recognition of the National Coaches Day that uh, we have celebrated. Um, just a shout out to all of my past coaches, um, starting with, I, you know, I apologize, my middle school coach, whoever that was. Thank you. <laughs> That's horrible, but I don't remember. But you know, having high school coaches, Tim Murphy, um, who was our head coach, and then uh, Dale Clayton, who was, took a special interest in me and, and didn't let me quit. And then going up until uh, collegiate coaching, who the Lightums, Matt and Randy, who allowed me to be on the team and took me in uh, so lovingly, so lovingly. And then Kevin Smith, and then um, Andy Seif, who wanted me to run and then I said I graciously said no so I appreciate all of your your time because I definitely wouldn't be who I am as a coach now in regards to track and field so uh thank you for each of your little slices of contribution to my coaching career now uh, I'll jump in there um my heartbeat props go to uh, the guy I'm named after, uh, one Mr. Uh, Emmanuel Christopher Huffins. Um, Pops is recovering from uh, cataract surgery that he had today. He's already mm -hmm. complaining that uh, that that Wanda, uh, that his his wonderful loving wife is she he's called her the warden twice today <laughs> because she's making him do the things he's supposed to be doing to recover properly um but shout out to one of the most even keeled toughest human beings i've ever been blessed to be around uh and uh, he happens to be one of my best friends and my dad so shout out to uh big huffins or ace as he is called lovingly in this family Uh, I'll go let the let the the senior close it out with the Twitter <laughs> finger here. No, uh, no. Uh, listen, we you are horrible. Oh, so you'll like me after this. I'm, I'm gonna do a good thing okay. because every now and then, you know, every now and then we uh shoot some arrows and and have some guests shoot some arrows at. at at our at our institution that is USA Track and Field. But they do, and that happened tonight. But <laughs> USA Track and Field also, you know, does a lot of good things. And one of the coolest things I think that they do is um, the Elite Coaches Summit that is upon us um, this upcoming weekend. Um, it's a great event. It's a it's an event that you have to earn your way into by invitation. And if you ever have the honor of being invited to that thing, you will truly understand, you know, the best of what that organization can pull off. And so um, we've all been there and we know what it is. And, you know, I'm excited to, to be headed back there this weekend and looking forward to, to seeing my colleagues and getting yelled at by, by Ralph and the analytic team and learning the, the new, the new things that, that have emerged from the, analytical 
studies going on with the Olympic year and all of that. And it, it's a, you know, it's a great experience for sharing ideas and, <clears throat> you know, learning some things, you know, in depth about, about what we all do for a living. And it, it's an honor to be there. And so to, uh, to Tyler and, and all the people that put that thing together and Ralph, can't wait to see y'all this week. We're very well said, very well said. Um, and, um, I, I'm a little salty because I, I got to work this weekend, so I can't be there. So, <laughs> um, But I, I want to give my heartbeat props this weekend to, this week, I should say, to um, our, our head trainer, Yolanda Lawrence. Yolanda um, was elevated from the assistant trainer position, um, and it has been a lot of fun to watch her diligently put her plan in place for you know, super care of the athletes in the track and field cross country programs. Um, and just want to say great job, young lady, bright future ahead of you. And I appreciate all your hard work, hard work and dedication to the Gator track and field cross country programs. That's awesome. That's, fun. Now, That's a fun celebration. Now, now, may I just say, because we'll get cussed out if we don't acknowledge y'all realize today is national coaches day. So, you know, Shout out to all coaches. <laughs> yes. Wow. Thank you all. Thank you all who are, who will, and who have been coaches. So shout out. Thanks for putting in the good fight. So with that said, we wrap up yet another episode. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, JD, for, for joining us and uh, entertaining us as you did. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it as much as our audience will. And other than that, gentlemen, see you next time. And uh... oh my God. <laughs> When the lights come on, the road just get to running. When the lights come on, the opponent smash the plumbing. Heard you like it warm, hot knife the butter. Truth pin them hard, knock them off that rebuttal. Tsunami, tidal wave to your puddle. Tough love punch you in the arms, little brothers. Athletics double, I'll see if there's no others. Track the field's pace and appeal to go further. Hey, Wiley, Coyote, it's road runners. Feels like you know us, you've been with us the whole summer. If not for this quarantine, these four corners wouldn't be. We here, but we here, so start learning. You gotta earn your stripes, gotta get your scars. Show you how to fight, but show us who you are. You lack experience, but still you wanna talk. And who is actually talking to your circle's kinda small. Heads prevail when the backbone's strong. Gotta keep it coming, no, it won't last long. Pass or fail, then sell the sad song. And if you don't check yourself, then that's wrong. Just trying to give you the real that you asked for. So why you keep cutting us off to ask more? We put it in slow mode, but you fast forward. Athletics, devil, I'll see the task force.